Hello everyone. Let's explore one of the most fascinating and deeply interconnected networks in the brain, the limbic system. Although it doesn't have a sharply defined boundaries like other brain regions, but the limbic system forms a functional circuit that governs emotion, behavior, motivation, memory, and even autonomic responses. So that's the reason we call it as it is the emotional engine room of the brain linking feeling with function. So what does the limbic system do? At its core, the limbic system integrates emotional responses like fear, anger and pleasure and the behavioral outputs like aggression or nurturing and memory formation and retrieval olfaction and even autonomic nervous system regulation. So all these are the important functions of this particular circuit we can say. So you could say that it connects how we feel, how we remember and how we react. So that is what it does. So now let's break down its main components and what each of them does. The first component of the limbic system is the hippocampus. So this hippocampus is located in the medial part of the temporal loop. The hippocampus is shaped somewhat like a seahorse and is uh, critical for memory formation. So it sits just posterior to the mammillary bodies and contributes to the floor of the lateral ventricles. I hope you might have understood the exact location of this hippocampus. So it receives inputs from the entorhinal cortex and projects to the thalamus, cingulate gyrus, amygdala and the mammillary bodies all through the fornix. But functionally, the hippocampus is the center of memory formation, particularly anterograde memory, which is the ability to form new memories. And it helps to consolidate short-term to long-term declarative memory and it is a key player in the Pape's circuit, right? Now, histologically, if you see, it contains epidermal neurons. This is what we need to know for the exam point of view. And uh, I'm not discussing any pathology over here, but I want to give you a small clinical relevance here. So bilateral damage to the hippocampus lead to anterograde amnesia as seen in early Alzheimer's disease. So, and these are the important components what we need to know about the hippocampus. And second one is the dentate gyrus. So this lies medial to the hippocampus and it is also involved in memory formation. It receives input from the entorhinal cortex and projects back to the hippocampus forming a part of the Pape's circuit. So it distinguishes feature is that it contains granule cells rather than the pyramidal ones what we have seen in the hippocampus, right? Yeah. Now, the third component is the entorhinal cortex. So this entorhinal cortex located at the rostral end of the temporal lobe. This is the major gateway between neocortex and the hippocampus. So it receives input from the olfactory bulb and project to the hippocampus dentate gyrus. So these are the two pathways we can say. But functionally, it is involved in memory consolidation, spatial navigation, and olfactory associative learning. And it is also plays a key and important role in the Pape's circuit. And now next is the mammillary bodies. So we can see here these mammillary bodies are the paid structures of the hypothalamus located at the distal end of the fornix. They receive input from amygdala, hippocampus and project it to the anterior thalamic nuclei via mammalothalamic tract. They are very essential for the memory formation and a part of you, you guessed it, the Pape circuit again, right? So by this, we have understood the anatomical as well as the physiological sites of this. So what about the clinical insight here? So lesions here can contribute to Wernicke's Korsakoff syndrome, particularly the memory loss aspect of this. 
is contributed by this mechanism. Now next one is the amygdala. So amygdala is located deep within the medial temporal lobe, anterior to the hippocampus. And the amygdala is a key player in the emotional processing. So it receives input from the cortex, olfactory system and projects to the hypothalamus by means of stria terminalis and also projects to the prefrontal cortex and olfactory cortex. But its main function include processing fear, aggression and anxiety, emotional decision making, regulating the autonomic nervous system and recognition of facial expression of emotions. So damage or dysfunction in the amygdala can alter emotional behavior and even social interaction. So now next part is the cingulate gyrus. So this cingulate gyrus, this lies superior to the corpus callosum on the medial aspect of the frontal and the parietal lobes. So it receives projection from the anterior thalamic nuclei and connects to the hippocampus and entorhinal cortex via cingulum, a white matter tract we can say. Functionally, the cingulate gyrus plays a role in emotion, attention and memory and is also a part of the papus circuit. So now the final component is the anterior thalamic nuclei, right? So these sits in front of the thalamus and are the relay point in the limbic loop we can say. So they receive input from the mammillary bodies via mammillothalamic tract and project to the cingulate gyrus and entorhinal cortex and they help integrate memory and emotional processing. So all these are the components of the limbic system. So finally, I want to give you a conclusion message over here that the limbic system is a beautifully interconnected structure that help us feel, remember, respond and survive. So it ties together emotion, memory and behavior and any disruption here can lead to major neurological or psychiatric disorders. So by this we have understood in detail about the anatomical and the physiological aspects of the limbic system.